Welcome to today's deep dive into the world of mystery and crime solving. In this video, we'll be exploring 10 brilliant female detectives who share the wit, wisdom and sharp instincts of Agatha Christie's iconic Miss Marple. From the quiet village investigator to the bold adventurer, these women have mastered the art of uncovering the truth, each with their own unique flair. Whether you're a fan of classic whodunits or modern mysteries, this lineup will introduce you to some of the genre's most captivating sleuths. Let's get started. 1. Miss Maud Silver, the closest kindred spirit Miss Maud Silver, created by Patricia Wentworth, is often considered the character most akin to Miss Marple in the world of detective fiction. Like Miss Marple, Miss Silver is an elderly woman who operates with the same quiet, unassuming demeanour. She is a former governess, turned private investigator, much like how Miss Marple's sharp insights often stem from her deep understanding of human nature and social dynamics. Both characters use their knowledge of human behaviour and village-like intimacy with people's quirks to solve mysteries, preferring intuition and observation over physical evidence. For example, in Grey Mask, Miss Silver takes on a case of mistaken identity and a hidden crime, relying on her ability to read people and their interactions. Similarly, in Miss Marple's The Murder at the Vicarage, her success hinges on understanding the relationships and tensions among the villagers. Both women rely on their sharp intuition, informed by years of observing others, rather than physical prowess or direct confrontation. One of the most notable aspects shared by both sleuths is that they often remain unnoticed or underestimated by the people around them. In the cases closed, Miss Silver is able to observe subtle details and unravel a complex murder plot, as people do not expect an elderly woman to be a formidable investigator. This parallels Miss Marple's own ability to surprise Scotland Yard detectives by solving seemingly unsolvable mysteries, like in 4.50 from Paddington, where her insight into human nature leads her to the truth behind a murder witnessed on a train. Additionally, both Miss Marple and Miss Silver have a maternal quality, exuding a comforting presence that encourages others to speak freely. This often provides them with crucial information that more aggressive detectives might miss. For instance, in The Chinese Shaw, Miss Silver's ability to create rapport with witnesses helps her solve a complex murder case involving jealousy and deceit. Miss Marple, similarly, in A Pocket Full of Rye, listens carefully to people's stories, piecing together subtle clues others overlook, solving the murder through quiet persistence. However, one key distinction between the two is their professional involvement in cases. While Miss Marple tends to be drawn into mysteries as an amateur, Miss Silver operates as a professional investigator, hired to solve cases. Despite this, their methods remain remarkably similar, leaning heavily on intuition, social observation, and a deep understanding of human nature. By drawing these comparisons, Miss Maud Silver can be seen as the professional counterpart to Miss Marple, sharing many of the same core traits, but within the formal context of private investigation. Both characters exemplify the power of intellect over physicality, relying on their understanding of people, rather than hard evidence to uncover the truth in even the most intricate cases. 2. Jessica Fletcher, the American counterpart. Jessica Fletcher, the beloved protagonist of Murder She Wrote, is often seen as the American equivalent to Miss Marple. Like Miss Marple, Jessica is an amateur sleuth whose sharp intellect and knowledge of human nature allow her to solve even the most complex mysteries. However, the two characters differ in their backgrounds, with Jessica being a successful mystery writer while Miss Marple is a small-town spinster. Both women thrive in small, tight-knit communities. Jessica in the fictional town of Cabot Cove, Maine, and Miss Marple in the English village of St. Mary Mead. In this setting, their local knowledge proves invaluable in solving crimes. For example, in The Murder, she wrote episode The Murder of Sherlock Holmes, Jessica's familiarity with the people of her town helps her unravel a murder plot, much like Miss Marple's deep understanding of village life in The Murder at the Vicarage. What makes Jessica similar to Miss Marple is her use of intuition and life experience rather than relying on formal training or advanced forensic techniques. 
Jessica's investigations often begin with her simply listening to people's stories and piecing together small details, something Miss Marple is a master of as well. In 4.50 from Paddington, Miss Marple solves a crime by understanding relationships between characters, similarly to how Jessica often spots inconsistencies in people's behaviour which lead to the truth. However, one major distinction lies in the tone of their stories. Murder, she wrote, often incorporates a more light-hearted and comedic atmosphere, whereas Miss Marple's cases, especially in Agatha Christie's later works like Nemesis, carry a slightly darker, more introspective tone. Despite this difference, both women manage to maintain an air of calmness and kindness, which encourages others to open up to them. Jessica's open, non-threatening demeanour allows her to gather important clues without intimidating suspects, much like Miss Marple's ability to gently pry information from even the most reticent witnesses. Another similarity lies in how both Jessica and Miss Marple are underestimated by those around them. In Murder, she wrote, Law enforcement officials often dismiss Jessica's involvement, assuming that a mystery writer can't possibly be a capable detective. This mirrors the way Miss Marple is frequently overlooked by Scotland Yard detectives in books like A Murder is Announced, only to later prove herself by solving the case with remarkable accuracy. Jessica Fletcher's success as a sleuth also stems from her extensive knowledge of human motivations, which she draws from her writing experience. In the episode Widow Weep for Me, Jessica uncovers a murder motive rooted in financial greed, mirroring how Miss Marple, in The Body in the Library, deduces the true culprit by focusing on their hidden personal motives. Ultimately, Jessica Fletcher can be seen as a modern-day American version of Miss Marple. While their settings, occupations and overall tones differ, they share the same core detective strengths, an acute understanding of human behaviour, the ability to remain calm under pressure and the knack for seeing what others miss. Both characters prove that age and gender are no barriers to being a top-tier detective, even when those around them might doubt their abilities. 3. Hetty Wainthrop, the working-class detective. Hetty Wainthrop, from the British television series Hetty Wainthrop Investigates, is another character who shares similarities with Miss Marple. Like Miss Marple, Hetty is an older woman who enters the world of detective work later in life, defying traditional expectations of women in their golden years. However, while Miss Marple operates within her village of St Mary Mead, Hetty's cases often take her into the working-class communities of Northern England, giving her a different social perspective. Both Miss Marple and Hetty Wainthrop solve mysteries using sharp observation and practical knowledge of people, especially their flaws. In the Hetty Wainthrop Investigates episode Missing Persons, Hetty uncovers the truth behind a young girl's disappearance by understanding the social dynamics of a close-knit family, similar to how Miss Marple solves crimes by dissecting the hidden tensions in rural communities, as seen in The Moving Finger. Their shared focus on the intricacies of human nature sets them apart from detectives who rely solely on forensic evidence or modern technologies. One key point of comparison between the two characters is how they are both underestimated by the people around them. In The Murder at the Vicarage, Miss Marple's unassuming appearance leads suspects to overlook her sharp wit, a mistake that ultimately leads to their downfall. Similarly, Hetty's seemingly ordinary, grandmotherly appearance allows her to blend into situations and extract vital information without raising suspicion. In the episode For Love Nor Money, Hetty's ability to chat with a wide range of people, from the elderly to the working class, enables her to piece together a complex financial scam. While Hetty Wainthrop and Miss Marple both thrive in cases that involve personal relationships and community dynamics, Hetty's background as a working class woman gives her a grittier, more hands on approach to crime solving. Where Miss Marple may rely on genteel conversations and her knowledge of village life, Hetty isn't afraid to roll up her sleeves and take more direct action, even going undercover in some cases to gather information. For example, in the episode A High Profile, Hetty investigates a seemingly unsolvable murder by posing as a cleaner, much like Miss Marple uses her connections in the mirror cracked from side to side to gather details that others miss.
Another difference is Hetty's more comedic and earthy personality. While Miss Marple is known for her politeness and quiet nature, Hetty often brings humour and a straightforwardness to her cases, offering a refreshing contrast. This reflects a generational shift in how older women are portrayed in detective fiction. Hetty represents a more active, sometimes humorous sleuth who doesn't shy away from confrontation when necessary. This contrasts with Miss Marple's subtler, more tactful approach. Despite these differences, both Miss Marple and Hetty Wainthrop are empowered by their age and experience, using their keen insight into people's motives and behaviours to uncover the truth. In The Murder at the Vicarage, Miss Marple's ability to see through lies and social facades plays a key role in solving the crime, just as Hetty's no-nonsense attitude and working-class wisdom help her solve the disappearance of an elderly woman in Poison Pen. Both characters show that intelligence and empathy, combined with a deep understanding of human nature, are far more effective tools than brute force or advanced technology in detective work. In the end, Hetty Wainthrop and Miss Marple both embody the idea that age is not a limitation, but rather a strength in the world of detective fiction. Their combined life experiences allow them to see patterns and connections that others might miss, making them formidable investigators despite their outwardly modest appearances. 4. Vera Stanhope, the tough and unconventional sleuth Vera Stanhope, the protagonist of Anne Cleves's Vera series, presents a striking contrast to Miss Marple while still sharing key qualities that make both characters exceptional detectives. Vera, a seasoned detective inspector with Northumberland and City Police, is tough, no nonsense, and driven by her dedication to justice. Despite her gruff demeanour, much like Miss Marple, Vera's success as an investigator stems from her deep understanding of human nature and her ability to perceive the complexities of people's lives. One of the most significant similarities between Vera and Miss Marple is their ability to remain unnoticed or underestimated by others. Vera's scruffy appearance and blunt attitude often lead suspects and even colleagues to underestimate her capabilities, much like how Miss Marple is often dismissed as a harmless old lady. However, in both cases, this underestimation proves to be a mistake. In The Crow Trap, Vera unravels a murder by observing the subtle dynamics between a group of women working on an environmental project, much like Miss Marple's observations of village life, allow her to piece together crimes in A Murder is Announced. Another key connection between Vera and Miss Marple is their unshakable focus on the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. Vera's sharp intuition and relentless pursuit of answers are echoed in Miss Marple's persistent search for justice. In the glass room, Vera's investigation into the murder of a literary tutor sees her navigating the complex personal relationships of the victim, a method Miss Marple would surely appreciate. Both women excel at cutting through lies and deceit to get to the heart of a matter, guided by their keen instincts about people's motivations. Where Vera diverges from Miss Marple is in her approach. While Miss Marple often relies on genteel conversations and social observation, Vera is more direct and unafraid to confront suspects with hard truths. In silent voices, Vera's interrogation style and willingness to get her hands dirty show her gritty, hands-on approach to detective work, contrasting with Miss Marple's more subtle methods. Nonetheless, Vera's ability to read people and see the bigger picture echoes Miss Marple's intuitive skill set. The settings of their investigations also present a contrast. Miss Marple's cases are often rooted in the seemingly peaceful villages of England, where tension simmers beneath a calm surface, as seen in The Body in the Library. Vera, on the other hand, operates in the rugged landscapes of Northumberland, where the environment itself becomes a character in the narrative, influencing the mood and tone of her cases. Despite these differences in location, both women share a similar insight into the hidden dynamics of their respective worlds recognising that no place is ever as quiet or innocent as it seems. While Vera Stanhope's more hardened personality and professional role as a detective inspector might seem worlds apart from Miss Marple's kindly spinster persona, they both exhibit a remarkable ability to navigate complex social situations and uncover hidden truths. Vera's compassion, though less obvious than Miss Marple's, 
becomes evident in her deep empathy for victims and her understanding of human suffering. This compassion drives her to seek justice, much as Miss Marple's sense of moral duty guides her in solving crimes. Ultimately, Vera Stanhope represents a modern, more hard-edged version of the female detective, but she and Miss Marple share the same core qualities that make them successful, an unflinching commitment to uncovering the truth, a profound understanding of human nature, and an ability to surprise those who underestimate them. Both characters show that sharp intellect and life experience, rather than physical prowess or advanced technology, are the most important tools in solving even the most baffling mysteries. 5. Phryne Fisher, the glamorous sleuth. Phryne Fisher, the fashionable and fearless detective from Miss Fisher's murder mysteries, brings a bold and glamorous flair to crime solving that sets her apart from Miss Marple's unassuming demeanour. However, Despite their stark differences in style and setting, both characters share an impressive intuition, sharp observation skills, and a strong sense of justice that make them formidable detectives. Phryne, set in 1920s Melbourne, is a woman of wealth and privilege who chooses to become a private detective, driven by her love of adventure and sense of independence. In contrast, Miss Marple's more modest life in the quiet English village of St Mary Mead reflects a subtler, more domestic approach to crime solving. Phryne is known for her daring exploits, often chasing criminals in fast cars or wielding a pistol, while Miss Marple rarely leaves her village or engages in physical pursuits. However, both women are driven by an unshakable belief in justice and fairness, no matter the social or political dynamics at play. The major difference between Phryne and Miss Marple is their personality and style. While Miss Marple is humble and self-effacing, Phryne is flamboyant, unapologetically confident, and enjoys using her charm to disarm both allies and suspects alike. Yet, much like Miss Marple, Phryne often uses her keen understanding of human behaviour to solve crimes, reading people's desires, fears, and hidden motives. In Cocaine Blues, Phryne's ability to see through the lies of Melbourne's elite helps her expose a drug ring much like how Miss Marple's grasp of village gossip in A Pocket Full of Rye allows her to uncover a complex murder scheme. One area where Phryne and Miss Marple overlap is their ability to navigate different social circles. Miss Marple, though rooted in the village life of St Mary Mead, often encounters members of the upper class and she uses her knowledge of social mores to solve cases, such as in the mirror cracked from side to side. Similarly, Phryne is adept at moving between high society and the criminal underworld, making her versatile and effective as a detective. In Murder on the Ballarat Train, Phryne's understanding of both the wealthy and the working class allows her to solve a murder that spans social divisions, showcasing her ability to observe how the rich and poor interact, something Miss Marple is equally skilled at. Both women are also underestimated by those around them. Miss Marple's elderly, kindly appearance leads people to dismiss her as harmless, while Phryne's beauty and carefree attitude often cause others to overlook her intelligence. This underestimation works to their advantage. In The Murder at the Vicarage, Miss Marple's inconspicuousness allows her to uncover the truth without raising suspicion. Phryne, in Death at Victoria Dock, uses her charm and social standing to access information that others would be denied all while suspects assume she's merely a frivolous socialite. Despite their different approaches, both women solve crimes by paying close attention to details that others miss. Phryne's investigative methods often involve bold action, such as impersonating suspects or breaking into secured locations, while Miss Marple relies on her intimate knowledge of village life and people's characters. Yet, at the heart of their detective work is the same core principle, an understanding of human nature. Phryne, like Miss Marple, can detect when someone is lying or hiding something, and she uses this insight to draw out the truth. Though Phryne Fisher's world is far more glamorous and fast-paced than Miss Marple's, their shared dedication to justice and their ability to outsmart those around them make them spiritual sisters in the world of female detectives. Phryne represents a modern, independent woman of the 1920s, 
while Miss Marple reflects the traditional values of rural England. Yet both characters prove that women of any era, armed with intelligence and intuition, can excel at solving the most baffling of crimes. 6. Jessica Fletcher, the mystery novelist turned detective. Jessica Fletcher, the central character of Murder, She Wrote, is often compared to Miss Marple due to their shared qualities as older amateur detectives who rely on their intelligence and experience to solve crimes. While Jessica's career as a mystery writer sets her apart from Miss Marple's humble village life, both characters are astute, resourceful and deeply insightful about human nature, making them skilled sleuths despite their lack of formal law enforcement training. One key similarity between Jessica and Miss Marple is their ability to observe the subtleties of human behaviour and uncover hidden motives. Jessica, much like Miss Marple, has a knack for noticing small, seemingly insignificant details that ultimately lead to solving the case. In the Murder, She Wrote episode, The Murder of Sherlock Holmes, Jessica uses her knowledge of human psychology to piece together clues about a murder at a costume party, much as Miss Marple does in A Caribbean Mystery where her attention to the habits of vacationers helps her unravel a murder plot. Both Jessica and Miss Marple are also known for their deep understanding of human nature. Their success as detectives comes not from forensic science or brute force, but from their ability to analyse people's behaviours, motivations and interpersonal relationships. In 450 from Paddington, Miss Marple deciphers a murder mystery by recognising how familial tensions drive the suspect's actions. Similarly, Jessica Fletcher often unravels complex plots by understanding the personal dynamics between the people involved, as seen in the episode Death Takes a Curtain Call, where Jessica solves a murder by dissecting the relationships within a ballet company. Another point of comparison is how both characters are underestimated due to their age and gender. Jessica, like Miss Marple, is often seen as a harmless older woman, which allows her to gather information without arousing suspicion. In The Murder at the Vicarage, Miss Marple's quiet, elderly presence is an advantage as she can sit unnoticed in the background, observing crucial interactions. Likewise, in Murder She Wrote, Jessica's seemingly unthreatening appearance often allows her to access places and conversations others cannot, as seen in The Legacy of Borbay House where she quietly uncovers a smuggling ring. A key difference between Jessica and Miss Marple lies in their settings and methods. While Miss Marple's cases tend to unfold in small villages, where she uses her knowledge of local gossip and social structures to solve crimes, Jessica's adventures take her all over the world, from small towns to bustling cities. In the episode Widow Weep For Me, Jessica travels to a tropical resort to investigate a friend's suspicious death, employing a more adventurous, globe-trotting style of detection compared to Miss Marple's more localised investigations in works like The Body in the Library. Additionally, Jessica's background as a mystery writer gives her a unique perspective. She frequently draws on her writing experience to analyse the crimes she encounters, viewing them as puzzles that need to be unravelled in much the same way she crafts her novels. This sets her apart from Miss Marple, who relies more on her intuitive grasp of human nature and her deep familiarity with the patterns of village life. However, both women share a methodical approach to problem solving, piecing together clues with patience and care. Despite their different backgrounds, both Jessica Fletcher and Miss Marple represent a similar archetype of the older female detective who is not bound by traditional expectations. Their sharp minds and keen observations allow them to uncover truths that others miss, proving that intellect and insight can be just as effective in solving crimes as more aggressive or high-tech methods. In both Murder, She Wrote, and Agatha Christie's Miss Marple stories, the central message is clear. Never underestimate the quiet, unassuming woman who watches everything with a sharp eye and an even sharper mind. Seven. Amelia Peabody, the Victorian archaeologist with a sharp mind. Amelia Peabody, the formidable heroine of Elizabeth Peter's Amelia Peabody series, offers an intriguing parallel to Miss Marple, though the two women are distinct in both personality and setting. 
Amelia is a Victorian archaeologist and amateur detective, known for her intelligence, strong-willed nature and fearlessness in both solving crimes and facing dangers in the deserts of Egypt. Like Miss Marple, Amelia's sharp wit and observational skills make her a successful sleuth, but her approach to solving mysteries is far more adventurous and hands-on. One of the key similarities between Amelia and Miss Marple is their deep understanding of human nature. While Miss Marple's insights come from years of observing village life, Amelia's knowledge of human behaviour stems from her travels and her encounters with diverse cultures. In Crocodile on the Sandbank, Amelia's ability to read people's intentions allows her to uncover a complex conspiracy while on an archaeological dig, much like Miss Marple's ability to see through the facades of her neighbours in The Moving Finger. Both women are also strong, independent figures who defy the social expectations of their time. Miss Marple's role as an amateur detective in a male-dominated field during the early 20th century is echoed in Amelia's career as an archaeologist and sleuth in the rigidly patriarchal Victorian era. Amelia often takes charge in situations where men would traditionally be the authority, much like Miss Marple confidently inserts herself into investigations that others believe should be left to the police. In The Curse of the Pharaohs, Amelia's determination to solve the mystery of a murder on an archaeological site despite opposition from male colleagues mirrors Miss Marple's persistence in seeking justice, even when dismissed by local authorities. Where Amelia and Miss Marple diverge is in their approach to crime solving. While Miss Marple tends to solve cases through quiet observation, patience, and the use of social networks, Amelia's methods are much more direct and action-oriented. Amelia is not afraid to confront suspects, chase down criminals, or use physical force when necessary, as seen in The Mummy Case, where she pursues a murderer through a labyrinth of tombs. Miss Marple, on the other hand, rarely takes such a physically active role in her cases, relying more on her intellectual abilities and keen powers of deduction. Despite their different investigative methods, both Amelia and Miss Marple share a sharp sense of intuition. Amelia's ability to detect when something is amiss in the archaeological digs she oversees is akin to Miss Marple's knack for spotting inconsistencies in people's stories. In Death on the Nile, Amelia's suspicions about the people around her lead to the unravelling of a deadly scheme, much like Miss Marple's ability to pinpoint the murderer in a Caribbean mystery by noticing subtle behavioural clues. Another connection between Amelia and Miss Marple is their compassion and desire for justice. Both women are driven not by a thirst for adventure or fame, but by a deep sense of moral responsibility. Amelia's commitment to protecting those she loves and to uncovering the truth, regardless of the danger involved, mirrors Miss Marple's quiet but unwavering dedication to ensuring that justice is served, no matter how difficult or convoluted the path to the truth may be. The settings in which they operate, however, provide a fascinating contrast. While Miss Marple's investigations unfold in the quaint and familiar environment of English villages, Amelia's cases take her to the exotic and often treacherous landscapes of Egypt. In Lion in the Valley, for instance, Amelia's knowledge of the local culture and geography allows her to solve a murder that baffles the authorities. Despite the differences in setting, both characters excel in environments where they are underestimated and both manage to use their intelligence and resourcefulness to uncover the truth. In conclusion, Amelia Peabody's adventurous spirit and hands-on approach to detective work may set her apart from Miss Marple's more subtle methods, but both women share the same core qualities that make them successful. Sharp minds, a deep understanding of human behaviour and a firm sense of justice. Amelia, like Miss Marple, defies expectations and proves that women can excel in the traditionally male-dominated world of crime-solving, whether in the small villages of England or the vast deserts of Egypt. 8. Precious Ramotswi, the empathetic detective from Botswana. Precious Ramotswi, the warm and perceptive protagonist of Alexander McCall Smith's number one ladies' detective agency series, shares many qualities with Miss Marple, though her style of investigation is distinctly her own. Like Miss Marple, 
Emma Ramotswi relies on her profound understanding of people and her community to solve mysteries, rather than high-tech equipment or physical pursuits. Both women bring a sense of empathy and wisdom to their cases, making them beloved detectives within their communities. One of the most notable parallels between M. Emma Ramotswi and Miss Marple is their reliance on intuition and a keen sense of observation. Emma Ramotswi often solves cases by paying attention to the small personal details of people's lives, much like Miss Marple does in St. Mary Mead. In the number one ladies' detective agency, Precious Ramotswi uncovers a case of fraud by observing the inconsistencies in a client's story and deducing his true intentions. Similarly, Miss Marple, in A Murder is Announced, relies on her deep knowledge of human nature to solve a murder by recognising patterns in people's behaviour and attitudes. Both Emma Ramotswi and Miss Marple are rooted in their communities, and their success as detectives is largely due to their deep understanding of the social dynamics around them. Miss Marple's strength lies in her ability to connect crimes to patterns she has seen in her village drawing on her knowledge of local gossip and social habits. In the same way, Myra Motswi has an intimate connection with the people and culture of Botswana, using this knowledge to resolve cases with cultural sensitivity and tact. In Tears of the Giraffe, Myra Motswi navigates complex family dynamics to solve a missing person's case, showcasing her unique approach to community-based detective work. However, a key difference between the two detectives lies in their motivations and personalities. While Miss Marple is driven by a quiet sense of justice and curiosity, Mama Ramotswi's motivation is deeply rooted in her love for her country and her desire to improve the lives of the people around her. Mama Ramotswi approaches her work with kindness and empathy, often resolving cases with a focus on healing rather than punishment. For example, Immorality for beautiful girls, she solves a case involving a troubled child, ultimately providing guidance and understanding rather than judgment. This approach contrasts with Miss Marple's focus on bringing criminals to justice, often through a more detached, analytical perspective. Another key similarity is the way both women are often underestimated by those around them due to their unassuming appearances and traditional roles. Miss Marple is often dismissed as a harmless elderly woman, a factor that allows her to gather information without raising suspicion. Similarly, Mema Ramotswi's role as a woman in a male-dominated society often leads people to overlook her capabilities, which she then uses to her advantage. In the Kalahari Typing School for Men, Mema Ramotswi uses her invisible status as a woman to gather information that ultimately helps her solve the case, echoing Miss Marple's ability to fly under the radar. While Miss Marple operates in a traditional English setting, Emma Ramotswi brings a distinctly African perspective to detective work. Botswana's cultural values, such as respect for elders and community interdependence, play a significant role in her investigations. This unique cultural context adds layers of complexity to her cases requiring her to navigate family loyalties, local customs, and community reputation. For instance, in The Full Cupboard of Life, Amara Motswe delicately handles a case involving a wealthy man with multiple suitors, carefully balancing the social implications of her findings with the need for truth. In contrast, Miss Marple's cases often hinge on her understanding of English society's class distinctions and moral codes. Despite their differences, both Emma Ramotswi and Miss Marple embody a gentler, more intuitive approach to detective work. They avoid violence and prefer to resolve matters with insight and compassion, underscoring the idea that a detective's strength can come from empathy and understanding rather than force or authority. Both characters bring a unique perspective to their respective cultures demonstrating that intelligence and insight transcend cultural and geographical boundaries in the world of detective fiction. 9. Sister Fidelma, the scholar detective with a religious vocation. Sister Fidelma, created by Peter Tremaine, is a unique figure in detective fiction, a 7th century Irish nun who also serves as a legal advocate and investigator within her community. 
Her dedication to both religion and justice sets her apart, yet she shares many qualities with Miss Marple, especially in her intellectual approach to solving mysteries and her emphasis on understanding human motives and behaviour. Despite her unconventional background, Fidelma, like Miss Marple, combines a deep knowledge of people with a commitment to justice, making her an effective detective who skillfully navigates complex social dynamics. Like Miss Marple, Sister Fidelma relies on careful observation and intuition rather than brute force. Her cases often hinge on understanding human behaviour, motivations and societal norms rather than on forensic evidence. For example, in Absolution by Murder, Sister Fidelma is tasked with solving the murder of an abbess during a religious debate. She unravels the mystery by examining the political and religious tensions among the suspects, much as Miss Marple would analyse the hidden motives of her fellow villagers in novels like The Mirror Cracked from Side to Side. A significant similarity between Sister Fidelma and Miss Marple is their keen analytical minds and capacity for empathy. Both women approach their cases with a mixture of logic and compassion, understanding that people's actions are often driven by hidden traumas or personal struggles. In Shroud for the Archbishop, Fidelma uncovers a murder within the church by patiently listening to the stories of those involved and piecing together their secrets and motivations, much as Miss Marple would do in a setting closer to home. Her deep compassion allows her to see past people's facades, much like Miss Marple's gentle, non-judgmental demeanour enables her to draw confessions from suspects. Another parallel is the way both characters are often underestimated due to their gender and roles. Miss Marple's role as an elderly village woman leads people to overlook her intelligence, which allows her to investigate without arousing suspicion. Sister Fidelma faces similar challenges, as her dual status as a nun and a woman in early medieval Ireland means that many do not take her seriously as a legal advocate or investigator. However, she often uses this underestimation to her advantage, much like Miss Marple does, observing and gathering information while others overlook her presence. In The Subtle Serpent, for instance, Fidelma's unassuming nature allows her to gain the trust of locals who would otherwise be wary of an investigator, which ultimately helps her solve the mystery. While Miss Marple's setting is the rural English village, Sister Fidelma's cases unfold in ancient Ireland with all its unique cultural and religious complexities. Fidelma's knowledge of early Irish law, which was progressive in granting women certain legal rights, makes her a groundbreaking figure for her time. Her understanding of both religious and legal matters often provides insights that are essential to solving her cases. In Hemlock at Vespers, Fidelma's familiarity with Celtic traditions and religious customs becomes crucial to understanding the motives behind a series of mysterious deaths. This contrasts with Miss Marple's more localised knowledge of village life, but both detectives bring a distinct cultural perspective to their work, allowing them to interpret clues in ways others cannot. Despite these differences in setting and background, Sister Fidelma and Miss Marple share a quiet strength and independence. Both are highly intelligent and confident, never deterred by the challenges of working in male-dominated environments. Sister Fidelma's intellectual rigour, combined with her sense of justice and moral duty, reflects Miss Marple's own commitment to truth and fairness, even when others may dismiss her insights as irrelevant. In the end, Sister Fidelma and Miss Marple both embody the idea that knowledge, intuition and empathy are as valuable in detective work as physical strength or access to advanced technology. Their thoughtful, perceptive approaches to solving mysteries highlight the timeless value of understanding human nature, a trait that makes both women not only effective detectives, but also beloved characters in the genre. Rad to ten, Maisie Dobbs the intuitive investigator shaped by war. Maisie Dobbs, the protagonist of Jacqueline Winspear's series, brings a unique depth to the world of detective fiction. A former World War I nurse turned private investigator in 1920s England, Maisie combines intelligence, intuition and a deep empathy for her clients, much like Miss Marple. Although Maisie operates within a more modern and urban setting, 
Her approach to solving mysteries echoes Miss Marple's emphasis on understanding the human psyche and piecing together clues through quiet observation. Like Miss Marple, Maisie's strengths lie in her acute psychological insight and her capacity to uncover secrets by understanding people's motivations. Trained in both psychological and physical observation, Maisie often enters the minds of her clients and suspects to understand the emotional forces driving their actions. In Maisie Dobbs, the first book in the series, Maisie unravels a case involving a home for wounded veterans, her empathy allowing her to connect with soldiers still struggling with the trauma of war. Much like Miss Marple's reliance on her understanding of people's everyday lives and hidden desires, Maisie's detective work is driven by her compassionate understanding of human vulnerability. Both women also share a personal approach to cases, often becoming emotionally invested in the people they help. For Miss Marple, the small community of St Mary Mead means she has a personal stake in keeping her neighbours safe. And in maintaining the peace, Maisie, meanwhile, carries the scars of war and understands the personal toll it has taken on the people around her, which drives her commitment to helping those who are suffering. In Birds of a Feather, Maisie investigates the disappearance of a wealthy woman and her journey ultimately leads her to uncover hidden family secrets and deep-seated grief. Through her careful and intuitive approach, Maisie finds resolutions that allow her clients to find a sense of healing, a theme often present in Miss Marple's cases as well. Maisie Dobbs and Miss Marple both use their quiet, unassuming appearances to their advantage. Miss Marple's elderly demeanour leads others to underestimate her, giving her the freedom to investigate unnoticed. Similarly, Maisie's unpretentious, gentle manner allows her to earn the trust of her clients and witnesses without raising suspicion. However, Maisie's investigative training adds a professional dimension to her work that Miss Marple lacks, as Maisie uses techniques like interviewing, gathering forensic details and consulting professionals, which were emerging aspects of detective work during her time. In Messenger of Truth, Maisie's formal skills in interviewing and analysing crime scenes help her solve the case, though she still leans heavily on her personal insights. Despite these differences, Maisie and Miss Marple share a reliance on intuition over brute force or high-tech gadgets. While Maisie lives in a time with access to scientific advancements, she often trusts her gut feeling and uses her instinct as a guiding principle, much like Miss Marple does. For instance, in An Incomplete Revenge, Maisie solves a case involving a series of arson incidents by following her intuition and examining the complex emotions at play in the local community. This case, much like the village murders Miss Marple solves, requires an understanding of local dynamics and social undercurrents, proving that good detective work often lies in subtle insights rather than hard evidence. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling journey into the lives of some of literature's most captivating characters. We hope you enjoyed the exploration of these personalities and the unique worlds they inhabit. If you enjoyed diving into these character profiles, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments which character analysis you'd love to see next. Stay tuned for more deep dives into the lives of iconic figures that bring stories to life.